everybody, welcome to General Hospital and be my GA Chapter Show. Let's get into it, starting with Mr. Max Scorpio. Now, as you guys know, he is back in the role as the police commissioner, and I gotta say, I'm kinda loving it this go-round. Let's be honest, in his last go-round, he wasn't the best police commissioner. I mean, he was kind of played as a dummy, and that made me mad because he's a Scorpio, damn it. I mean, he should be, you know, smart and bending the rules and being a badass, but they really made him kind of a chump. This time round, they're making him smarter, they're making him willing to bend the rules and, you know, be an intelligent police commissioner. I really appreciate that. Basically, the crooked cop from the Beecher's Corners Police Department came into the PCPD to announce to Mac that Jason was an escaped prisoner, but when Mac asked him the details, he was less than decisive about it. Mac pretty much laughed him out of the PCPD. Even when Michael Corinthos came in and the policeman ID'd him as the guy that helped Jason escape, Mac played it cool, and then Chase gave Michael an alibi. And once Michael and Chase revealed that Michael did actually help Jason escape, he played it cool and was very stern with Chase, but let it slide because of, you know, the whole Shiloh situation. I gotta say, I love having a man in charge that's willing to bend the rules in order to bring down a bad guy. And with that said, we gotta talk about Robert Scorpio because it turns out that back in the day, Robert went to law school and that let him become the new DA of Port Charles. We got Laura as the mayor, Mac as the police commissioner, and Robert as the DA. I am in heaven. I don't even care how stupid the plot point of Robert going to law school is. I just love that Robert is sticking around and is the DA of Port Charles. I am all in for this. All the frick in. Writers, do not play me. Do not make these guys chumps. You got legends in the law right now. You got Laura, Robert, and Mac. Do not mess this up. All right, now let's talk about Jason and Sam. Now they are in hiding because Jason's on the run and they're at a safe house. And I gotta say, I love those scenes because it was classic J Sam and Kelly Monaco looked freaking gorgeous. She looked very natural and very beautiful. I had to say it, she was gorgeous. Now while in the safe house, Jason and Sam are coming up with plans to bring Shiloh down. Sam goes to Beatrice Corners disguised as a waitress so that she can get the statement from the waitress about Shiloh and bring that back to Port Charles in hopes that they are willing to bring her in for real, officially, to make a statement. Jason decides to sneak into jail to visit Harmony so that he can break her and make her realize that Shiloh is bad. And he actually freaking manages to do it. Thank God, I'm finally seeing an end to this never-ending nightmare that is Shiloh. So here's how Jason did it. Harmony did not realize that Shiloh actually killed her husband. She was, you know, blinded by Shiloh, but when Jason kind of played it out for her, she was in shock and devastated. So that's what broke her. I love seeing Shiloh's Donnies turn against him, but it doesn't mean that Shiloh is done with his shenanigans. Shiloh pretty much stalks Brad for a bit and manages to take Wiley's sort of wipe cloth and he plans on getting a DNA test done. Go ahead, Shiloh. Get that DNA test done so that it proves that that baby is yours. Oh my god, I'm loving it. I don't know how messy things are going to get on the whole Wiley being Michael front, but I'm living for just the very possibility of Shiloh finding out these test results and it not being his son. Like, I am so down for it. He's going to be so pissed and I'm so here for it. I just want to see Shiloh so mad that he's going down. And of course, I'm enjoying this possibility as much as I enjoy Christina getting into Shiloh's face and Shiloh's lawyer being like, you better watch out for her, she's gonna be a compelling witness. Speaking of Christina though, she actually got the nerves to go to Dr. Byrne and Alexis to admit what was in her pledge, and I am really happy on how it played out. If you guys have been watching GHMV, you know that I saw a screenshot of Christina's pledge and got super mad when I saw what it was. Basically, it said that Christina saw that Alexis hit Kiefer on purpose and that she kept it quiet. And the way that they played it out when Christina confessed is that she actually lied in her pledge. Thank goodness, because I was so annoyed at the possibility of that being a rewrite. And I feel like, quite possibly, they might have drawn this out in order to make the sort of confession come out this way. To me, it doesn't make much sense that Christina would lie in her pledge, considering how all-in she was with Shallow, but I'm okay with this because it would have been a really stupid rewrite to begin with. And if anything, it also kind of shortens this Shallow story, which I am all in for because I am so done with it! This whole confession did come out in an awkward time, though, because Alexis was just chucked as Neil's patient when he found out that she dug into his past a little bit, but then by the end of that whole situation with uh, Christina and Alexis, he brought her back on, so... Good, I guess. Can we now get back to the whole Alexis Cassidyne storyline with her watch? I've been waiting for that for a very long time. 
All right, moving on, let's talk about Deb now. So Sunny goes to Mike's cousin and bribes her with a ton of money so that she will say that Deb is her grandson of her deceased son. And he also threatens her. Eeh. I mean, first of all, I thought that this was all taken care of, but it turns out that Sonny hadn't quite gotten the whole Dev being an American citizen thing together. He asked Brick to do so this week as well. I love that they just constantly give this GH superfan stuff to do on the show. I mean, he's just a sports announcer and he gets to play things with Sonny and Christina and Carly all the time, even though it's so unnecessary. But going back on Mike's relative for a second, they keep giving her last name as Corbin, but the thing is, I'm pretty sure that only Mike changed his last name to Corbin, otherwise Sonny wouldn't be Michael Corinthos Jr., right? So that's a stupid plot hole. Do better research writers, I mean really all it takes is a Google search. I didn't even watch the show back then and I know this, so it's it's kind of stupid that you know. Y'all are in charge of the show. All right, but now let's talk about Dev himself. I am loving his scenes with Joss and Cam and now Trina's in the mix too. This is the first time we've had like an actual teen scene since like Lulu, Maxie, Dylan, Georgie, Brooke, like that group. I know that we had teenage Michael and Christina, but they only really had each other and, and well, Kiefer, and that went well. But yeah, I'm digging it. We got the bad boy, we got the sassy but wise chick, we got the pretty boy, all American dude who's got a little bit of a bad side, and he got the privileged girl in Jocelyn. I'm loving it. It's very reminiscent to the old school GH teen scene days. I love Dev flirting with Trina. You know that this is going to come into play, and this is going to make Josh jealous, and it's going to be a weird, I don't know, a weird square with those four, I think. Cameron showed up to the house to ask Jocelyn to be his date for the Elizabeth and Frank girl wedding reception, and she was very reluctant, but in the previews we see that she is there, so I think that Deb's probably going to piss her off enough to go to the wedding in the first place, because that seems to be their relationship, which I kind of dig as well, because it's pretty funny knowing that those two actors are friends in real life. In fact, they're best friends. So I, I just found that out during their live stream, and that just makes me so happy because it makes their relationship much more real and fun to watch. I am okay with the possibility of their romance happening, but I do want it to take a very long time. I mean, this whole Oscar situation is still very fresh, but I am loving the sort of banter between them and even with Cameron and Trina as well. By the way, Trina is now in the opening credits. Yes, I love her. I love her to bits. I want to see more of her. Alright, finally let's talk about Bobby Spencer. Now Scott Baldwin decided to propose to her randomly and the scenes were truly ridiculous, but I am loving her getting screen time, so I don't care! I mean, it's about time that Bobby gets a storyline of her own, first of all, and I wouldn't say no to a Bobby and Scott pairing. But yeah, like I said, I'm loving her getting screen time. I mean, I know that most of her screen time is going to be for the PSA of the type 2 uh, diabetes. But I wouldn't say no to a romance, so I'm, I'm here for it. Anyway, I think that pretty much covers the highlights. I know that there was some fluff with uh, Stella looking into her DNA background. I don't know what that's going to lead to. I don't really care either. But, you know, the rest of the week was great. I liked it. What did you guys think of GH? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a big ol' thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.